everybody, welcome to your weekly broadcast. Lee Honish, David Bartels, bringing you real estate trends that hopefully you can all benefit from. David is joining us all the way from New York. Uh, I am joining you all the way from San Diego. And first and foremost, on behalf of both of us, uh, happy seasons, politically correct terminology. Are we allowed to say happy Thanksgiving or is that not politically correct anymore? <laughs> I, can't, I can't keep up I with think, the terminologies. I think, of... I, th I think Thanksgiving is okay. <laughs> okay, thank goodness. Uh, then in that case, hey, be thankful for something and enjoy. I know everybody's looking at it as a negative. I don't know why you're going to be with people you love and be thankful for it. So uh, as simple as that. Uh, how is New York first and foremost? Well, I'm outside, so I don't have to whisper because, you know, it, it is COVID. There's lots of people home and it's hard to find a quiet space. So I'm sitting outside and it's 50 degrees. It feels a little cooler than that because there's no sun. Well, I was out here a little earlier on another call, and it was uh, much nicer. So, um, but it's a, it's, it's a. I like the, uh, I like the change of season, and I'm, but I'm looking forward to going home to warm Southern California in a few days. Uh, Victoria said you look cold, and well, I can understand <laughs> why. You do look cold, and to be perfectly honest, I'm sitting on the porch again because, well, we don't have winter in San Diego ever. I don't. <laughs> since I've lived here, I don't think I've had a bad day ever. Uh, it's a little breezy. It's in the 60s yeah. today. Yeah, yeah, terrible, terrible. Sun out. Yeah, yeah. It is what it is. All right, so we're going to talk about the DOJ, the settlement, and uh, what that all means. So let's uh, start right there. Uh, a few months ago, we talked about this. We've ta uh, we've kind of updated it along the way. Why don't you start with the general um, overview of the lawsuit with the National Association of Realtor uh, and go from there? Well, I'm not sure how many people were paying attention, but it's really big news is that the Department of Justice sued the National Association of Realtors claiming, um, you know, I guess antitrust, which is a you know legal term for collusion, I think. Um, don't quote me, I'm not a lawyer, but basically they sued them and, and along with the suit had a proposed settlement. NAR has already agreed to that settlement. There are, let's see, I'm going from memory here, so let's see if I can. Um, You're doing I perfectly so far. I can recount them. Number one is that they objected to the fact that um, the fact that um, the commission rate is not available to the new consumer. So they want they want the they want disclosure of the buyer agent commission made to um, the buyer. They want the um, they want people to be able to sort um, for properties without using the commission being paid to realtors um, being available. You can't sort by commission anymore. So you can't exclude properties because it's paying a lower commission. Well, you can today, but you won't be able um, to soon. Um, they also talked about, um, what else were they talking about, Lee? They okay, were also the US Department of Justice has filed an antitrust uh, trust lawsuit against the National Association of Realtors. There are four uh, points. DOJ, right, there are four points. Here they go. Prohibit MLS from disclosing to prospective buyers the commission that buyer brokers will earn if a buyer purchases a home. Let's start with that one. So what's yeah. that mean in English, David? It means that 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 the, all buyers are going to know what the buyer agent commission is now. Okay. Uh, number two, allowing buyer brokers to misrepresent uh, misrepresent to buyers that a broker's services are free. It's not free, and so you so agents can't say that their services are free anymore just because the buyer is not paying. The seller is paying. Those services are not free. Okay. Number three, enable buyer brokers to filter MLS listings based on the level of buyer broker commission offered and to exclude homes with lower commissions yeah. from consideration right. by so, potential home buyers. So I remember that one, and you, you're not going to be able to do that anymore. <laughs> and number four, limiting access to lockboxes that provide licensed brokers uh, with access to homes okay. uh, for sale to NAR members. So right now you have to be a member of an association 
um, in order to get access to lock boxes. So it's not enough to be a licensed agent. You have to be a, an, a, an MLS member or an, a local association member. And that is that requirement is going to be going away. So um, NAR has already accepted these terms of the settlement. It's got to be approved by the judge. It's got to be approved by by the DOJ and um, NAR will ultimately ratify it and they expect it to be in effect the first part of next year. So okay. first quarter of 2021. So in English, how does this affect me if I'm a day-to-day -day real estate agent? Well, in the beginning, it may not affect you. You're gonna, there's going to be some behaviors, and it depends on how you conduct your business now. If you're one of those people who are marketing your services as free to buyers, you're not going to be allowed to do that anymore. Um, if you're an agent who is not a member of the MLS and you're on the phone begging listing agents to give you access or to have a seller give you access so you can show a property to somebody, you're not going to have to do that anymore. So you're going to be able to go out and see any property that's listed in the MLS. Um, I don't know what that looks like. You probably just get a, you'll probably be able to get a non-member, you know, super key or something like that, but you'll be able to get a super key to be able to get into um, those properties. Um, should, I make, should I make the blind assumption that there's, NAR might huh? figure out a way? Well, I was thinking that isn't to say, and I want to make this clear for everybody, knowing NAR, there's probably going to be a fee if you're a non association like they're going to figure out a way to monitor well there's a this. fee yeah well there's a fee because super super charges a fee so right sure. now if i'm a member of the mls i still have to pay an additional fee to supra right so yep. um or whoever the key company is is super in my neighborhood so um i suspect that fee is going to be the same no more discrimination you know just another long line of discriminations that are being eliminated um so um, realtor lives matter is what I'm trying to say, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we can say that. So far, we said not. happy, things we said happy Thanksgiving I'm and realtor sorry. lives matter. Uh, yeah, no. yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not minimizing the black lives matters movement. I'm just making what maybe is a bad joke, but, uh, but I'm not, I'm not. realtors that aren't, the point is, and I think the point I'm making here is that realtors who are not members of the MLS are discriminated against. And now they're not gonna be. Yeah, it's always been that way. I mean, I go back into the 90s when I had my license. It was almost forced upon you that you had to join the association. You have to pay these fees. You have to update every year and buy new lockboxes. Like this endless cycle of, here's a new fee, here's a new fee, here's a new fee, here's a new fee. Yeah, well, you know, that's a good point. My my employment agreement with my agent says they have to be members of the National Association of Realtors and abide by the code of ethics and that kind of thing. And I wonder if we're going to be a, allowed to do that anymore. I guess I'll have to get a legal opinion, but that may be another way that things change is that you can no longer mandate your agents be a, be a member of an association. Um, like like we do, and have lockbox access and MLS access. If they can figure out how to do their job without it, then they have it do. I wonder, you know, it makes me wonder what's going to happen to to NAR memberships. You know, is membership now going to be reduced dramatically? What kind of impact is it is it going to have? But I think the big difference that we're going to see um, is more long term. I, I think in the short run, we're not going to see a big change in and how people really conduct their business. I think it's it's commonly known that that the, a buyer agent is getting paid out of the seller commission. And what this is more likely is more of a um, more of a step in the direction that that we I've been talking about. We're going to go in the long run, which I think this is going to eventually. And now shoot sooner than later. I thought this would take longer, but sooner than later we're we're Sellers are now going to clearly have the option to disclose how much, you know, to pick how much commission they're going to offer a, a cooperating agent commission. And you're going to see you're going to see buyer agent commissions are going to begin to compress. And you're going to see a lot more buyers asking for a piece of that buyer agent commission 
um, you, you know, in exchange for doing a lot of the work that a realtor has traditionally done. And these will be the first steps in what will ultimately result in buyers getting paid by buyer, um, buyer agents getting paid directly from the buyer and not the seller. And, um, but what will happen first is that because of the way these changes are gonna take place, you're gonna see a lot of agencies move or push their agents to sign buyer agency agreements like you do listing agent agreements. It's gonna clearly specify what the compensation is. And it's gonna state that if the seller is not offering a commit, you know, let's say that they have a buyer agency agreement that says that the, that the seller is going um, or that the buyer agent is going to make two and a half percent of the purchase price and the seller is only offering one and a half percent of the purchase price the buyer is going to have to make up that difference and the and the the buyer not the not the agent the buyer's agent is going to decide i have two houses here they're comparable in one of these houses i have to pay my agent an extra 1% or $6,000 on a $600,000 house on this other one I don't. And it's going to be the buyer's decision to decide which house they're going to buy um, as opposed to the agent eliminating the house to show because it's not paying enough commission um, to suit them. It's a, going to be an interesting time. I'm very excited about it. I, I love this kind of change. Well, that leads into Victoria's question. Did you hear that Zillow is now a brokerage? Do you feel that that is directly related to what we're seeing here with uh, no. the lawsuit? No. Zillow has no, been moving away all this time. Yeah, but Zillow is a brokerage, at least for now. You know, I don't think anybody believes that they're not going to be a brokerage, but for now, they're staying in their lane um, and they're, they're being brokers for their um for their iBuyer program. So that's the only thing that they're doing. They're just they just want to list their own houses um is what they want to do and and buy their own houses. So they're using their license to buy and sell their own houses. They're not they're not taking their leads and giving them to their agents um you know to go out and do that. They're still trying to you know to keep those two businesses separately. That doesn't mean that eventually they won't do that, but for now, and they say that they're not going to, are going to compete, you know, with their agents for their leads. Where where you see Zillow going is moving away from the is is moving away from the the pay for the leads and moving more towards a um, a referral fee kind of program, and they need an agency. They need, they need a broker license to be able to do that as well. So the broker license allows them to take referral fees instead of advertising fees from agents for their leads. And it also allows them to transact their own iBuyer business, buy side and sell side. There you go. Uh, with all of that said, the Dow went up 30,000 points on the announcement that uh, Biden is the president elect and certified by multiple locations. Let's talk about this quickly because, you know, I like to put things in a title that will get clicks. Uh, let's talk about – I'm just being brutally honest. I'm a marketer at my core. By the way, go to Hanish.io and watch some of these techniques. They're all free. Um, let's talk about Biden uh, and what that means. Uh, we've talked about this previously, that the election would have impact for real estate. We've got the DOJ on top of NAR. We've got uh, everybody sort of making moves here for the new year. Do you see it as a positive or a negative to uh, with the administration uh, with the spike of, I thought Colbert nailed it last night, 30,000 whatever. It went up 30,000 whatever it does, points, something, whatever. Uh, I thought his explanation of, I don't know, but we won the lottery. It went up 30,000. Uh, what does that all mean? Does it mean anything to people that are real estate people? Did it mean anything to your wife? Does it, what, what, what does all that no. mean? Listen, the, you know, the, the market, the real estate market, the stock market, they, if you look at the history of the United States, or at least the history of the, of the record keeping for these markets, they go up regardless of who the president is, okay? 
And, you know, that's really what's going on. I don't think it has any kind of meaningful impact on whether or not people buy or sell other than they're just happy it's over, right? Yeah. Whoever won, they're just glad it's over. Um, you know, it's, it's, I remember the countdown clock to 2000, um, you, you know, when we thought that at midnight, yeah, we, Y2K, we thought the internet was going to break. The banks were going to go out of business. We weren't going to be able to get any money out. My boss um, actually left the party that we, that he was hosting at 12, at, you know, 12.01 AM so and shotgun. went to the, and went to the bank to withdraw money just to make sure that everything still worked. You know, I thought it was, you know, it was, it's, it's, it doesn't make any difference at the end of the day, the economy is still going to go forward. You know, even the people who lost and aren't happy with the decision still, you know, still have to do business and still have to take care of their families, still have to go to the grocery store, you know, still need to, you know, buy cars and gas and all the other things that keep everything going. And that is going to um, continue. And the, you know, and especially if the Senate ends up being Republican, it's just going to be more of the same. You know, the, you know, the, you know, Biden's not going to, you know, be able to make, you know, the changes that everyone's afraid he's going to change, um, you, you know, any more than Trump is going to make the changes they were afraid that he was going to change. You still need, you know, the Congress to, you know, to agree for most things. So and the and the regulations and the regulations that you're going to see dialed back are going to be, um, you know, aren't really. I don't think they're going to affect um, real estate at all. Interest rates are going to stay low, demand is going to stay high, and inventory is going to be low for a while. So that's just how it's going to be. 2021 will probably be the best year in record for real estate based on the number of real estate transactions we have uh victoria writes what about trump wants uh trump wants to do with privatizing freddie fanny i probably could have cleaned that if english wise what about what trump yeah. wants to do about privatizing freddie fanny? well i don't you know i don't know about that i mean you know i don't know who's gonna you know who's gonna bail them out when they they need to i i'm not really an expert on on what Fannie and and Freddie does, they run as an independent agency now. Um, they're just, you know, they're just bankrolled by, you know, the U.S. Treasury. And I don't know how different that would be, on, you know, what private privatizing it means. So it's really it's really hard for me to comment on that. But I doubt very seriously that it would impact the the role that Fannie Freddie has in the secondary market. Um, it would just change, you know, the ownership and oversight um, to a private organization or a public company um, managed by um, an executive team rather than Congress. There you go. Uh, with all of that said, do you have a Thanksgiving wish to all people, great and small? Well, I, you know, I, I think that we can be you know, I, I think that we can be thankful that for the most part, we've been able to work um, from home. Um, we can be thankful in the real estate business that our business has grown, um, even though there's maybe initially there was a pullback from, you know, as a result of COVID, um, business has actually grown and there's all kinds of opportunity. And 2021 looks like it's going to be a monster year um, for active real estate agents. Um, I think that some of the changes that we're seeing in the, um, you know, with this DOJ um, settlement, I think are ultimately positive for the industry. I'm actually excited about them. I think it gives companies like mine um, an advantage um, in the, you know, in the, in the marketplace. And I think that you're going to see some more consumer friendly um, options for buyers and sellers of real estate as people um, figure out um, what the new landscape is going to look like on the road to looking like other industrialized countries where sellers pay their agent and buyers pay their agent, same way it works, you know, when you go to court, you know, in, in most cases. Um, I think that, um, 
I think that if you've been fortunate enough to get through this crisis without um, becoming deathly ill or losing somebody to COVID, you can be grateful. Um, you can you can look forward to the vaccine, which looks like they're going to start distributing sometime by the end of this year, and um, you know that that should should really um, overlay and provide a lot of confidence to people um, about what the market is going to look like. And I think that mid year we could very well be right back to normal, um, but at a but at a heated pace. Um, I, it, we're going to have a robust um, summer selling season um, this year. So um, there's a lot of things to be thankful for. And if you can find a way to be safe and be around your family and um, I can't. then I, I can't. I, so I, I'll say it for everybody. You should be very, yeah. very happy. Yeah. My daughter's be, my daughter and her mother don't want me anywhere near them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <I'm>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I get it. So there's, you know, everybody's everybody's got something to be grateful for, and Absolutely. you know, and and if you're not sure, I would just find a moment of contemplation, and I suspect that you can find a handful of things. Maybe things aren't exactly the way you want them to be, um, but you can be grateful for having the challenge itself um, to get move you out of your comfort zone and to move you into um, action that will ultimately allow you to achieve your goals. I'll tell you, you know, if you're one of, and if you're one of those people and you're struggling with, um, with where you are in your life right now, um, I'll tell you a couple of things and they may sound a little cheesy, but you know, if anybody can do it, um, you know, they would, if it was easy, anybody can do it. That's what challenges are. They're supposed to move you out of your comfort zone. Um, I, I will tell you, um, this is that if you really look back uh, over current events and you start connecting the dots from where you started to where you're trying to go, you have probably made significant um, um, progress and you're probably just not where you want to go. But that doesn't mean you're not moving closer to your goal um, every single day. And a big part of achieving success is just really believing um, that you can and will. But it's not going to happen. Um, all by itself, you got to go out there and do the work. You got to do the work every single day. Every and I day. encourage you, um, I encourage you to do that. I would uh, expand upon that. Uh, as we've talked about on a few of our shows, mm -hmm. boy, that negative self-talk has got to end for the new year, people. I, right. I've had a couple of friends recently go, Lee, I'm really fired up and I want your help. And uh, because, you know, now that I'm a dedicated spokesman for Everhome, by the way, visit Everhome during the holiday season. Um, <laughs> Everhome.io. Everhome.io. And by the way, if you want to listen to back episodes of this, I put it all on my site. And there's a link for Everhome.io. Go to Hanish.io. We are a .io family now. Um, <laughs> my blog is up and it's functional. But uh, someone asked me, okay, I'll take your help, Lee. I know you've been pushing it on me because I'm my friend. And I said, okay, as long as you don't have negative self-talk, I'll be more than happy to help you and give you suggestions on what will mm -hmm. make you – haven't heard from that person in three days since I said that. I yeah. said, and there you yeah. go. I just don't do negative anymore. It's not in my vocabulary. Uh, it is my experience that when I am positive and do positive things, I have positive and positive things happen around me. That's just the way it seems to be working out. Um, I would like to dispute it. Because I can look at the holidays for me and go, oh, I'm not going to get to be with my friends. I'm not going to get to be with my daughter. I'm certainly, my family does not want to do the holidays because of my father's situation. Uh, so I could sit and go, oh, it's terrible. Instead, I'm happy. I've got a roof over my head, food in my stomach, uh, and I still have the same friends. And Like, stay home. Stop spreading it, people. Stop it. Just stop it. It's okay. It's uh, this too shall pass. So, you know, just think, you know, listen, this is a, this is a great time of year to really, you know, contemplate what you're, what's really important and what you really want and how you're going to do it. That, you know, as we, as we make the, as we turn the corner on, on 2020 to 2021 and we make a sprint towards the end of the year, 
Um, I would really encourage you to do something that may be contrary to what you think you should do. And that is hit the gas, hit the gas yeah. right now. Cause I'm telling you, we're going to have a massive surge of activity as soon as Christmas is over. You know, the week between Christmas and new year's is the busiest online um, for online traffic on Zillow all year long because people have the extra time and you, you know, it feels like the summer selling season right now. I'm still blown away by how robust activity is um, this time of year, though it's slower than it was this time last month. Um, it is still very busy. We're still listing houses every day. We're still putting, you know, we're still showing properties. It's all my agents are reporting being um, very busy. It looks like that's going to continue. And don't be surprised if, you know, a day or two after think, after Christmas, it really starts to pick up with a lot of activity um, beginning the first part of the year. Interest rates are gonna stay low. Inventory is going to, um, is low right now, but you're gonna see a lot of inventory hitting the market. And I think there's gonna be plenty of buyers to absorb that inventory. So you wanna get your buyers ready right now. You wanna get your strategy ready right now. You wanna get your mindset ready right now. And you wanna start right now get your content put it out there rinse repeat go brand yourself go be something go get a drip page do here's some advice go to honish.io and david and i have put our entire catalog of all of these calls up for you guys to go through uh you can join us each week and ask us questions but more importantly what are we at 300 400 hours of this I, it, like uh, there's I a have, staggering amount of content i <laughs> have no idea we're going to physically have to get a virtual assistant to download all that stuff when we're done using this platform someday to get all of that uh, content physically off of there. But it's hours and hours of us talking about trends and marketing and things that are useful to you. And if you're stuck at home, and I'll, I'll give away a trade secret, there are my sweats, um, <laughs> doing Zoom calls and Zoom get-togethers with people where you're wearing a dress shirt up top and a pair of sweats down below. Spend a little bit of time and learn something new. I uh, We talked about last week where I documented the entire process of how we branded some content for David, and I actually parsed it all out. You can do exactly what I laid out. It doesn't cost a dime. It was super easy. Uh, so I've actually learned a new hack that I got to tell you, David, that is so ridiculously good. Um, that's not a teaser for anybody listening. It's that I learned a hack. I was shocked by how people were doing this to get new listings and deals, but I digress. Have a great holiday from us. Uh, we will be back here uh, each week uh, with podcasts and broadcasts and videos and things to help you better your business. Please check out everhome.io if you're a real estate agent or a home buyer or a home seller. Uh, learn about an MLS that you can actually put your property online and into. Uh, and opportunities for real estate agents that are out there. David hasn't given me the script yet, so I'm still winging it. That's uh, it wasn't bad, David. It wasn't bad for no script yet from the uh, from the department. I, I feel that I'm close. Um, anything you'd like to add this week, David? <laughs> 